Joining us right now to get into the Phillies, they split 2-2 over the weekend. And it looks like no Zach Eflin, at least for the very near future. To get them that all that more, it is Bob Wankel from Crossing Broad joining us right now on 97.3 ESPN. Bob, how you doing today? What's up, man? How are you? Doing pretty good. So, obviously, you know, the Phillies getting that split over the weekend, it, it kind of feels like a consolation prize. Is it, not? it feels like, you know, hey, congratulations, you, you didn't fully lose the series. You just didn't do that much more than that. So, what do we take from a Phillies team that got punched in the face for two games and then found a way to win the other two? Yeah, I mean, one of the things that we heard at the All-Star break was how the schedule was really going to lighten up. But here we are now, five games, or uh, I'm sorry, ten games out of the All-Star break, and they're five and five, you know, which is exactly what they were going into the All-Star break. There are 500 teams, so you're still waiting for this team to make a move. Now, um, you're kind of like on a yo-yo with these guys right now because on Thursday night and Saturday night, uh, they were just absolutely dreadful uh, and completely outclassed. But they get great starts from both Zach Wheeler and Aaron Nola, And so in some ways, uh, you know, I look at this weekend and I I kind of consider it to be almost a positive because regardless of what the Phillies do at the trade deadline, uh, none of it really matters unless Aaron Nolan and Zach Wheeler pitch well. So to get good performances out of them is very encouraging, but um, they need to make a move here and they need to make a move in the standings. They can't just keep treading water. So that move needs to come sooner than later, right? Like they, they, I don't, let me ask you this. What is t- what is Dombrowski waiting for? Like, is this the traditional waiting out the market situation? Or is he legitimately just, like, not finding a deal he wants? Like, what is your feel on this? Well, I spent a lot of time down there this, this weekend. And uh, we actually were able to talk to Dave Dombrowski on Saturday afternoon. And, you know, the, the scope of it is basically this. I mean, they're going to make moves. I, I think it's, it's pretty obvious at this point they're probably going to make multiple moves. Uh, but there are a lot of different dynamics in play here. And, and one of them is that there are a number of teams that are taking the next few games to kind of assess where they're at. Because, I mean, similar to the Philly situation, being three or four games out is a little bit different than being six, seven, or eight games out. And so I think a lot of teams are kind of in limbo right now and sort of assessing their options. And so at the end of the day, it still takes two sides to complete a deal. So I think the Phillies are at the mercy of the market a little bit. And I think right now that the demand for teams that are willing to sell is probably a little bit higher. And and Dave uh, noted this the other day, that as things kind of get a little closer to the deadline, usually those demands lessen a little bit. So I think the Phillies will make moves this week, but I'm not entirely surprised they haven't done anything yet. So what is the move they need to make first? Because I feel like this team has multiple needs, right, Bob? It's not like they need just one thing. They're not one piece away from winning the World Series. So is it – if you're making the move or you're saying Dave Dombrowski, let's say he calls you today and says, hey, Bob, let me ask you a question. You know, are you saying bullpen first, starting pitching first, center field? What, what should be the priority for this team? You know, it's pretty crazy because for the entirety of this season, I would have said bullpen, bullpen, bullpen. And and certainly they still need to add to the bullpen. There's no disputing that. But what I do know is that they absolutely cannot function the way that the starting rotation is set up right now. And listen, as recently as Saturday, uh, Dombrowski had noted like, hey, listen, Zach Eflin's going to come back. We feel pretty good about him returning very soon. But then today... Uh, The latest update was, and I'm not down there today, but I saw a couple of uh, the other writers tweet out that that Joe Girardi basically said he didn't come out of yesterday's bullpen feeling like he wanted to. So right now you have Zach Wheeler, you have Aaron Nola, and then you have three question marks behind him. I mean, getting Spencer Howard on track and, and him giving you five or six solid innings tonight would make you feel a little bit better. But even if that comes to fruition, I just do not believe that you can send out Vince Velasquez or Matt Moore, certainly not both of them, uh, every turn through the rotation. To me, those guys have to come out of the rotation. So I think that they need absolutely, at the very least, one starting pitcher, maybe two starting pitchers, and then uh, a couple back end of the bullpen pieces as well. I think that this team needs to make three different trades in order to give itself a shot. Bob Wankel from Crossing Broad joining us here on the Sports Bash on 97.3 ESPN at Bob Wankel CB on Twitter as the Phillies start their four-game set with the Nationals tonight. So you split two with the Braves. All right, you didn't 100% lose, right? So now you go into the Nationals series. You got to beat the Nationals, right? I mean, they're trying to trade Scherzer now. Strasburg looks like he's done for the year. The Nats are pretty much, you know, waving the white flag almost on the year. So 
don't the Phillies have to take three out of four in this series to really make a statement that, hey, we're contenders in the NL East? Yeah, this is where they should be able to make a move this week. You're at home. You play pretty good baseball at home. Uh, even with your inconsistencies, you're getting a Nationals team in here uh, that just was dominated by a really bad Baltimore team over the weekend. I mean, this is an opportunity to make a move. The Nationals come in eight games under 500, I believe. And, you know, listen, they're they're going to throw Zach Wheeler in the series. Obviously, they won't be throwing Aaron Nola. So they're going to have to use some combination of more Velasquez and, and Howard, I guess, around Zach Wheeler, and that's not a slam dunk, but the way that the Nationals are going right now, and assuming you're not going to see Max Scherzer in this series, which uh, right now it, it doesn't look like is going to be the case, yeah, you have to find a way here. I mean, the, the Nationals are, are basically one step away from packing it in. You can bury them this week and kind of making a move here as the Mets and Braves uh, kind of beat up on each other uh, throughout the week. So this is the series where the Phillies really need to make a move for a variety of reasons. Not only do they have to close the gap in the standings, but this is where you say, okay, Dave, okay, Sam Fold, make a move. Dombrowski said a couple weeks ago that he believes they can score enough runs to make up for the pitching and the defense. Do they have enough offense in this series, Bob, to make that happen? <laughs> Yeah, you know, I mean, listen, I wrote at the break three things I expected to see in the second half. One was Connor Brogdon sort of emerge here as as a, a true back of the bullpen arm and Aaron Nola bounce back. And I expected this to be for the second half of the season, a top five offense in the National League with all of its parts back. I really thought there were some positive signs leading into the All-Star break. Now that has not worked out offensively, um, especially over the last week or so post that that Marlin series. They have been horrible with runners in scoring position. They're sort of reverting back to their tendencies to swing and miss a little bit too much. Strikeouts are starting to tick back up a little bit. Uh, but really, when you look at it on paper, they should be better than this. And, and you would think with this, especially the runners in scoring position stuff that you'll kind of see a, a regression to the mean and a positive regression. So I would expect them to start scoring a little bit more here. Um, and when you look at the lineup, I mean, it's it's still a pretty solid lineup. They could use help in center field. In an ideal world, like if they had a, the bullpen settled and they didn't have to make moves in the starting rotation, I'd say, yeah, go out and target a, a real center fielder here because it's a it's a glaring need. But um, in light of all of their other needs, I just don't know that you can address all of those different things. Speaking of center field, I know that the name um, Starling Marte keeps being thrown around because he's going to be a free agent. Is that a reasonable target for them in your mind? Because, I mean, that is a trade in division. It doesn't happen that often. Yeah, I mean, I think where the Marlins are at right now, they wouldn't be precluded from dealing within the division. Uh, it's not like they're they're in it. It's not like you're talking about a player that has three or four years of control beyond this season. So trading a rental player to the Phillies or trading a rental player within the division, I don't think is really something that that they would be scared from or, you know, scared away from. That being said, I mean, yes, it, it's a logical target. It makes some sense. It really, and I know this is probably stating the obvious, comes down to price. Uh, Dave Dombrowski on Saturday said that this team will not trade high-level prospects for rental-type players. He doesn't believe that the Phillies are that type of team or that close where they would consider doing something like that. But I also don't think it's going to require an elite-level prospect in order to bring back a player like that. One of the trends that we've seen in baseball over the last number of years is that very rarely do elite higher tier players get moved at the trade deadline when i mean prospects when i say elite tier players so i mean that's just not really the nature of the, the trade deadline anymore so i don't expect the phillies to have to try to you know take one of their top five prospects and flip them out of here um where it makes some sense is like you look at where they're at with catcher right now rafael marchand is a very nice prospect very good defensive catcher but there is a clear block to him being a, a player here with the phillies so players like that Mickey Moniak, I think, would be on the table at this point. Um, I think that uh, there are a variety of guys. Uh, Jalen Ortiz is a guy that kind of had fallen out of favor but got very hot here over the last week or so. Uh, you know, recency bias sort of plays a role in these things, and I wouldn't be surprised if they move players like that. Now, I feel like everybody and their cousin has either texted the station, texted me personally, or tweeted at me with trade scenarios for the Phillies. Uh, of all of the million relievers that everybody and their cousin has brought up, the Phillies could trade for from Rodgers from the Twins to Kennedy from the Tech, Texas Rangers. Uh, do you have a favorite of those names? Is there is there a name that you're like, you know what, that actually makes sense? 
usually I don't go after the the big name. I don't, I don't, I just don't think it makes a lot of sense a lot of times. I think you have to overpay. But when you consider the multi-year need that they've had with their bullpen, you know, over the last couple of years and a need that they're going to have again next season. I really think you can kill a couple birds with one stone uh, if you go out and make a deal for Craig Kimbrell. I mean, he's a guy that has a $16 million option next year. That's very expensive. I know the Cubs will probably say, well, there's control beyond this year, so we want a better prospect. But you could just as easily argue that, hey, you consider his age, you consider that he's in the middle of an elite season right now, but the previous two years he had struggled a little bit. I think you can probably absorb that salary, not have to part with elite level prospects and find a way to get him here. I just think that, he is the most obvious need, uh, you know, or fixes uh, their most obvious need, and he's the best player to do it. And so that makes a lot of sense to me. Now, if it's not Kimbrel, though, for whatever reason, is there another guy after that? Because I feel like you know, that's, that's best case scenario, right? Let's say best case scenario is not available. Is there another guy that you believe makes sense? Kennedy makes some sense. I don't love Rodriguez from Pittsburgh. I know he's having a really good year, but he's a one-pitch pitcher. He doesn't miss a ton of bats. Um, I, I kind of am a little bit scared by him, to be honest. I could see a situation where he comes here, does not perform nearly as well as he did in Pittsburgh, and everybody goes, hey, it's another Brandon Workman. Um, Kennedy makes a little bit of sense. I'll tell you what, the Cubs are going to sell. We all know this. We just talked about Craig Kimbrell. Another guy that I like out of their bullpen is Ryan Tapera. I know that his name has gotten thrown around a little bit uh, here over the last few uh, days. Uh, He's a guy that I think that they might want to look at as well. Um, But you know what, man? Listen, honestly, I think there's probably two or three teams right now that that are considering selling that may not by the time Friday rolls around. I think there's a couple teams that are thinking they're going to stand pat or might consider buying that probably won't by the time Friday rolls around. So it really is a fluid situation. Um, And I do think that there's going to be enough willing sellers out there that the Phillies will be able to make, uh, you know, a couple moves. If like you set the line at over under two and a half moves, I would probably take the over right now. I think that they're going to make three moves. I don't think that they'll be like absolutely headline stealing moves, but I expect them to be fairly active. Well, I hope you're right because between watching Chuck Fletcher make 2 million moves over the last week and a half and the fact the Eagle season is here, I feel like the Phillies got to do something to keep us keep us fully engaged this point, Bob, because let's be realistic. Uh, a two and two split over the weekend feel, feels like uh, feels like the most uh, lame situation in, in possible scenarios getting into this national series. Yeah, I told Mike last week, the one thing that the Phillies are consistently good at is not letting you feel too good about them for too long. And, uh, right. you know, you, you sit down there and I was there all weekend and uh, I just tell you, I, I don't see a lot of buzz around that ballpark. I don't I don't get the sense that the fan base really believes in this team. Uh, but you know what? You have one good series here. You make a couple moves at the end of the week, and, and things could change. I mean, we could be singing a very different tune seven days from now. He's Bob Wankel crossing broad at Bob Wankel CB on Twitter, Phillies reporter over there. Phillies start a four-game series with the national site and follow Bob for all the Phillies coverage over there at Crossing Bob. Bob, great stuff today. We'll catch up with you soon. All right. Talk to you soon, man. Thanks.